I'm all too familiar with the experience that life can change in a matter of seconds. I learned that at a relatively young age. When I was 15, I had my first experience with death. I had a dance teacher that I was really close to and he fell ill. Being 15 years old, I didn't think anything of it. I just thought that he was taking a couple weeks off and I would see him again. I was studying for my bio final because I was a sophomore in high school and I get a text from one of my best dance friends. The text says, Yuri died. Within seconds, my life had completely flipped upside down. One minute, someone that I love so deeply is here. And the next, I will never see him again. I didn't get to say goodbye. I don't even remember the last time that I saw him. He was just gone. When I was 16, I was in dance rehearsal and all of a sudden I couldn't see in my right field of peripheral vision. After rehearsal, I started to get a little bit of a headache. At first I thought it was just a migraine because all of my symptoms pointed to migraine. Three days go by and my headache does not go away and my vision does not come back. Clearly something is wrong. We have a special guest. She wants to be in the episode. So she's gonna sit right here. I go to the hospital and long story short, I had a stroke. I know, what the fuck do you mean you had a stroke at 16 years old? This is a story for another time. But the point is from these experiences, I've gone throughout my life very aware that life can change in any moment. But knowing this and experiencing this are two completely different things. No matter how many times I feel like I've been through really dramatic life changes, I feel like you can never be fully prepared for when it happens again. Two weeks ago, I was in Hawaii. I was having the best fucking time of my life. And I get a text from my family saying that there was something wrong with my cat. Like there was something wrong with her foot. And I didn't think too much of this because my cat has kind of injured herself before from playing too hard. And it's never been that serious. Like. She'll get the zoomies and she'll maybe zoom a little too hard and she'll hurt herself a little bit. She'll limp for a couple days and she's fine. It's really never been more than that. So I wasn't too worried. We get back to LA, we land. I don't even make it home before my dad tells me we're gonna have to put L down. It's 5.30 in the morning. I have not slept. I have not eaten. Not even 12 hours ago. I was in Hawaii, literally jumping off of a cliff into the ocean. I'm not even in LA for five fucking minutes before I'm being told that I need to put my cat down. What? What the fuck are you talking about? What do you mean? I haven't even seen her. I haven't even gotten home. I don't even know what the fuck to do with myself. I'm freaking out as you can imagine. I get home and I see my cat and she's completely fucking immobile. She cannot walk. She somehow broke both of her front legs. I was obviously out of town. I didn't see what happened and my parents didn't see what happened either. So we don't even know what the fuck happened. We don't even know like what is actually wrong with her. We just know that she cannot walk. And by the way, Elle is an indoor cat, so we can rule out any accidents that potentially could have happened outdoors. So it's 5.30 in the morning, haven't slept, haven't eaten. Both my parents are telling me that I am going to have to put my cat down because most likely we were not gonna be able to afford surgery for her. My parents were definitely really hasty with coming to the decision of just putting my cat down because they know that fixing an animal is a big cost. So they pretty much just wanted to like jump the gun and make the decision before we even started spending money on figuring out what was going on. This is my first pet. So I am obviously very against that. I wanted to at least figure out what was wrong and what our options were before we made the decision for the worst case scenario. We end up taking Elle to our primary vet. She gets x-rays, she gets a diagnostic. She has dislocated both her elbows and broken both her front legs. This injury is so serious that they cannot even perform the surgery that Elle needs at that clinic. 
The vet needed to call three other hospitals to get someone specialized in bone surgery to be able to treat her properly. And the vet gives us an estimate for how much this surgery was going to be. To say the least, it was a lot of fucking money. And in that very moment, I just thought that I was going to have to say goodbye. But the vet also tells us that it would be worth at least seeing the bone specialist so that we could get a little bit more of an accurate gauge on what's happening. Because this is just a general clinic, they don't have the right technology to accurately diagnose L to the best of their ability. So she says that we should at least consider taking L to the specialist before making any final decisions. So that's what we do. We take my cat to the specialist and they give us another estimate for the surgery. It ends up being less than the initial estimate that the original vet gave us. It's now possible for me to finance this surgery. I talk it out with my sister and we make the decision to move forward with the surgery. Long story short, Elle gets the surgery. She's recovering now, clearly. She's right here. Making such a huge decision was impossible. While all of this is happening, I'm thinking to myself, how did this happen? Why is this happening? When something crazy like this happens, you're like, it's hard to process the fact that all of a sudden you're like going through this like massive life change, this massive experience, this really difficult thing. In the moment, I was like, I just couldn't understand why this was happening to me. And it was also really fucking weird to be going through something so traumatic and like, watching the rest of the world just like live their life like nothing is wrong like i would walk outside and people are just having their coffee having a meeting with a friend like i had to go to work like nothing was fucking wrong like you go on social media and you see people just blissfully living their life i think coachella was happening when this was happening to me so i was like going online and seeing everybody just like talk about their coachella outfits this this and that and i'm out here like oh my god i need to put my fucking cat down what it's like one minute you're living your life like nothing is fucking wrong and the next you're just like what is going on life does not stop just because something traumatic is happening to you i still had to go to work I still had to like fulfill my fucking responsibilities as an adult because I'm a fucking adult. Like it was a little different when I was a teenager and I was going through certain things like the death and my stroke because I'm very lucky to like be in a position where I can say this, but I didn't have to worry about too much. Like my parents kind of took care of it. Like I could process the death of my dance teacher because I didn't have any additional responsibility. Like all I had to do... And all I had to worry about was going to high school and going to dance rehearsal. I could spend the rest of my time grieving and processing what happened to me. And for the stroke, like, I was excused from school. I didn't have to do homework. I didn't have to go to dance rehearsal. All I had to do was focus on recovering. But as an adult, not only do I not have the time now to process that this is happening, on top of that, I need to make this really fucking big decision where there's just no answer. As I'm trying to make this decision, like, do I put my cat down or do I spend all of the money that I have to save her? Like, there's no right answer and there's no one to tell you what to do. And Depending on what I do, I still need to fulfill the responsibilities that come with the decision that I've made. I ended up making the decision to spend the money to save my cat. Now I need to make sure that Elle is recovering so that what we did spend on the surgery is not going to go to waste. There's all this post-op care that she needs and it's my responsibility to make sure that she gets proper care. On top of that, I need to make sure that I can financially fulfill this. And even if I had made the decision to not proceed with the surgery, then I would be in a state of grief. But I would still need to go to work and like do the things that I need to do as an adult and fulfill my adult responsibilities because life doesn't fucking stop. While I was going through this experience, and not to say that I'm not still going through it, like I still am definitely processing this it just 
in the thick of it, I was thinking to myself, like, I am a different fucking person after this. Like, I am not the same. When going through something so highly emotionally charged, it creates a shift in you. You have to change in order to keep up. Here are some things that I have done to help me process an event like this. And these are things that I do regardless of if I'm going through a hard time or not. If I hadn't already been doing these things, I think going through this when I was in the thick of it would have been so much harder to handle. Like I would have spiraled. I feel like I was able to handle this situation relatively with a cool head despite how intense everything was because I do these things in my everyday life or I try to do them as much as I can. I know everybody has different ways of coping and I'm not saying that these things are going to work for everybody. I'm also not saying that if you do any or all of these things, you're going to be like cured. These are just things that work for me and that can help you through the process. The first thing is meditation. The way I like to do it is I like to meditate as soon as I wake up in the morning before I use any social media or go online or start to fill my brain with everything that I need to do today. I will sit down I'll put on some like calming meditation music and meditate. Depending on how I'm feeling I'll do a guided one but generally I just like to sit down take deep breaths and observe my thoughts and observe the energy that is like within my body and see how I'm feeling and just become aware of what I'm thinking. It feels like a nice bath for your inner world. In the long term, I also notice that it helps maintain a level of perspective on the things that I'm going through. Like it helps me not zoom in so much and get really highly emotional to the point where I cannot think clearly or make rational decisions. There's a lot of different kinds of meditation and there's also a lot of data out there on the benefits of meditation. So you can research that if that's interesting to you, if you wanna know directly how beneficial meditation is. The next thing is reading. I think it kind of depends on what you're reading. For me right now, I am reading The Creative Act. I just somehow was like reading the right book at the right time. One of the days that I was at the hospital, I needed to charge my computer. So I found a little coffee shop around the corner and it was fucking packed. There was only one seat available. So I take the seat and I see right in front of my face, The Creative Act. So I'm like, oh, great. I can read this book while my computer is charging. So I flip to the page that I'm on and I read, I mean, this is fucking insane. I end up reading exactly what I needed to hear at exactly the time I needed to hear it. Let me read it. Consider detaching from the story of your life as it's happening. You're observing a dramatic scene where the protagonist faces a seemingly insurmountable challenge. There's always a next scene, and that next scene may be one of great beauty and fulfillment. The hard times were the required setup to allow these new possibilities to come into being. The outcome is not the outcome. The darkness is not an end point, nor is the daylight. They live in a continually unfolding, mutually dependent cycle. Neither is bad or good, they simply exist. This practice of never assuming an experience you have is the whole story will support you in a life of open possibility and equanimity. When we obsessively focus on these events, they may appear catastrophic, but they're just a small aspect of a larger life. The further you zoom back, the smaller each experience becomes. Zoom in and obsess, zoom out and observe. We get to choose. I read this and I was like, what the fuck? This was such a helpful reminder for me because when you are so deep in such an emotional experience, it can be really difficult to see past your suffering. When you're in it, it feels like you're never going to be able to get out of it. Like there is no light at the end of the tunnel and it's really easy to let it be all consuming. This is definitely something that takes practice. Like when I was a teenager and I was going through a hard time, I did not have the mental strength or experiences to guide me through the process and keep me at a level of awareness that would help me see beyond my suffering. And also I'm not saying to like not feel your emotions. I think the first step in processing anything really emotionally difficult is allowing yourself to feel the way that you feel and be honest with yourself. There's no way for you to even move forward if you're like in denial about 
how you feel. The next thing is exercising. This is really fucking self-explanatory. There's so much science out there on how exercising helps with depression, anxiety, the release of endorphins, etc., etc. So I don't really feel like I need to go into too much detail about this. Journaling. I mean, it's kind of like the same idea with meditation. When you journal, you're getting like all the shit that you have up here out of your body in like a physical form. The next thing is breathing. There's so many breathing techniques out there that you can use to help regulate your nervous system. You've heard this before. Also, I forgot to mention that going outside has been a really big priority of mine recently. Letting your skin feel the sun, listening to like the sounds of nature and like taking in fresh air and just like being it releases certain chemicals in your brain that can help support more positive emotions. It like releases serotonin and stuff. I did not do any actual research on any of these things, but I know that there is science to back all of this stuff up. I've read about all this. I just cannot like regurgitate it right now. And the last thing, which is especially important to me because it becomes kind of like an impulsive thing I do when I'm having a hard time, which is screen time. I have to set boundaries with screen time and especially social media. When I'm going through something, it's like a really easy, quick, immediate fix for how I'm feeling. I'll go on social media, forget my problems for a brief moment, get really involved in somebody else's life, but ultimately that's not actually fixing anything. And to overindulge in it, especially when you're going through a hard time, just makes you feel worse. I know social media is a highlight reel, we all know, but it still doesn't make it any less difficult to be going through something yourself and go online and seeing everybody just living their best life. I mean, prime example of this is that when I made my Instagram post, at the very same time, I was making the decision on whether to spend everything that I had on my cat or put her down. Like, I was in the fucking thick of it, but online it looked like, oh, I just had this really fun trip to Hawaii, not a care in the world, I'm tan, I'm gorgeous, everything is fine, which it wasn't. I mean, this is a conversation that we've all had. It's so easy to compare your life to somebody else's life because you don't get the full story. Okay, how am I feeling now? (sighs) I mean, in the moment, I think everything was happening so quickly that I really didn't have time to process what the fuck was happening. I needed to make sure that I was like just staying afloat enough to make the right decisions for myself. And now that Ella's had her surgery and she's in the recovery process, I feel like only now that I have begun to actually process what the fuck just happened, like I'm I'm not okay right now. Like I feel like it's just now catching up to me. And normally I would wait until I had fully processed something before talking about it, especially talking about it on the internet. But talking about something while you're still going through something feels like it carries a different energy. I don't know, there was something about this that I felt compelled to share in the moment. And hopefully it makes you feel less alone. Things like this happen and it's always a helpful reminder to not take your life for granted or certain things in your life for granted because you never know when your life is gonna change. I actually had the idea for this video before this even happened. I was going through a different period in my life where I had become aware that I was like not happy with how I was existing and I needed to do something about it. Like I needed to change. So I started doing all the inner work, all the stuff that you fucking do when you feel like you need to change. And I had a moment where I started noticing that I had changed. And sometimes change happens so gradually and so subtly that you don't even notice. Life can happen in these really big ways and it's really easy to see the before and after. But the idea for this video originated from the way life can change so subtly that you've changed before you've even realized it. I think that's all I got. I hope this was helpful to you in one way or another and I love you, thank you for listening.